This is the Emperor's Mosque in Sarajevo, one of the city's oldest. It was built in the 15th century during the reign of the Ottoman Sultan Mehmed Fatih, following his conquest of Bosnia and Herzegovina. More than 550 years later, after having fallen into disrepair, it was fully restored by the Turkish State Development Agency TIKA. It is only one among numerous projects financed by Turkey throughout Bosnia and Herzegovina. Over the past two decades, Turkish state and non-state organizations have spent millions of dollars restoring monuments from the Ottoman period, including mosques, bridges, dervish lodges, shrines, hammams and caravansarays, which have been either neglected under communism, destroyed during the 1990s war, or had simply fallen into ruin due to a lack of funds. Turkey has also constructed numerous schools and health clinics, financed Turkish studies departments, and even trained state employees in public administration. Alma Brunicanin is a Bosnian Muslim and a former journalist of Turkey's public broadcaster TRT. It is the common Ottoman past that binds the two countries together, she says, and that such symbolic and invisible gestures influence the perception of Turkey among local Bosniak Muslims in a war-torn country. AKP leaders are very aware of Turkey's Ottoman heritage. They have managed to direct state funds towards revitalizing and preserving Islamic endowments and Ottoman cultural heritage in this region. They wanted to restore and renovate numerous Ottoman heritage sites that have either been destroyed or had fallen into ruin during the communist period or were simply destroyed during the war in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Many mosques have been restored over the past decade throughout Bosnia. And I can openly say that perhaps every 200 meters you can come across a building that has been renovated or restored by the Turkish State Development Agency TIKA. Hence, as I pointed out earlier, by strengthening their presence in the Balkans, the AKP sends a message to its voters that Turkey is since the coming to power of the AKP become much more present in this and other regions. But Turkey hasn't always been this present in the region. During the Cold War, Yugoslavia and Turkey maintained lukewarm diplomatic relations. Turkey did open its doors to Yugoslav Muslims willing to emigrate between the two world wars and again in the 1950s and 60s when communist state repression against Muslims ran high. However, Ankara did not show any particular interest in the religious freedoms of Yugoslav Muslims nor with the state of Ottoman cultural heritage. This changed following the end of the Cold War and the breakup of Yugoslavia. Turkey's president, Turgut Ozal, from the center-right Motherland Party, called for a US-led military intervention to end the war and save Bosnia's Muslims. The Serbian genocide of Bosnian Muslims during the 1990s played an instrumental role in galvanizing Muslim masses throughout the Islamic world, particularly in Turkey. Turkish Islamic organizations and Islamist parties, such as the Welfare Party, led by Rejmetin Erbakan, did much to raise awareness about the suffering of Bosniak Muslims and collected significant financial donations and humanitarian aid. However, even though the Turkish public clearly sided with Bosniak Muslims, in its foreign policy, Turkey followed a line of action that was strictly within the NATO framework. The real change in Turkey's policies vis-à-vis -vis the Balkans came in with the AKP party coming to power in 2002. Their blend of political Islam closely resembled that of the late Ottoman period under Sultan Abdul Hamid II and his pan-Islamic worldview. Well, political Islam is not a new ideology came with President Erdogan. It has links to uh, Ottoman Empire. So, uh, and the Balkans was a very important part of uh, Ottoman Empire. Actually, uh, many historians, uh, leading historians, call Ottoman Empire as a Balkan Empire. 
not than Anatolian or not than Middle Eastern one. So even if you compare uh, Balkan cities and towns with Anatolian cities and towns, you can find more Ottoman monuments than a regular Anatolian town. So, I mean, Sarajevo, where, where we are now, is a very good uh, example of it. You can see bridges, mosques, madrasas, and all other buildings uh, from Ottoman era. So, uh, as I said, you can find more uh, monuments here. And also, uh, Turkey and under President Erdogan saw the Balkans as a natural hinterland. So, if you want to increase your soft power, actually, you had a great asset in the Balkans. So Ottoman monuments uh, were suffering and there was a TİKA, Turkish Aiding Agency, there was other UNICEF Emre Institute uh, and also Diyanet was very active to renovate uh, and restore all Ottoman era uh, monuments. So that was a very effective tool to show Turkey's influence and that was the natural hinterland. From the beginning, the AK Party adopted former Prime Minister Ahmed Davutoglu's ambitious framework for driving the country's foreign policy. He considered Turkey a rising geopolitical power in a pivotal geographic region. The country began opening up its formerly self-centered foreign policy towards the regions it bordered – the Balkans, Caucasus, Central Asia and Middle East. The political stability and strong economy during the first decade of AKP's rule provided Turkey with the necessary resources and self-confidence to pursue a more proactive foreign policy. This resulted in the country's increased visibility throughout the Balkans, especially in countries with large Muslim populations. Narratives transmitted by Turkish politicians and religious leaders during their visits to Balkan Muslims revealed the dominance of topics such as joint Ottoman heritage, kinship, shared motherland, security promises and solidarity. It was a two-track diplomacy, says Yahya Mohasilovic. He himself received a scholarship to study at Turkey's prestigious Boğaziçi University and currently teaches at the International University of Sarajevo, a Turkish-owned university closely linked to the AK party. Well, religious policy of Turkey is one of the main components of Turkish foreign policy in the Balkans. Um, generally, religious diplomacy, how it is called in the literature, is generally directed towards the Balkan Muslims. There are around s s between 7 and 8 million Muslims living in the Balkans and they, they are seen in Turkey as a legacy of the Ottoman past. So there is a lot of, lot of overlapping understanding of the, of the cultural uh, understanding of Islam, which is very similar between the Turkish Muslims and the Balkan Muslims due to the Ottoman past and Ottoman legacy. Um, so Turkey has recognized this and one of the main uh, regions where, where Turkish religious diplomacy is active is Balkans, especially those countries uh, where Muslims form a majority or, or a relative majority like Bosnia and Herzegovina, Albania and Kosovo. Of course that religious diplomacy is not oriented only towards the Turkish people that are living in the Balkans or, or Balkan Turks how we call them, but towards Albanians and Bosniaks as well. Um, the main instrument of that religious policy is the ANET, which is uh, official institution which is responsible for, for, promoting, um, for promoting religion or Sunni Islam in Turkey and outside, outside of Turkey. Um, the ANET has become one of the main players of religious diplomacy in the Muslim world, especially after the 1990s with the fall of the Soviet Union, after a lot of Turkic republics, former Soviet republics, which have Turkic majority, um, became independent. The ANET has, has, um, has uh, spread its, its influence first of all in the, in, the, in the early 1990s towards the Central Asia but later on as war in Bosnia and, and Kosovo has ended towards the Balkans as well. Um, so um, the ANET is responsible for the official religious diplomacy of Turkey so they are in close cooperation with the Islamic communities in the Balkans like Islamic community of Bosnia, Islamic community of, of Kosovo, Macedonia, so on and so forth. But also Turkey is very active when it comes to how it is called, um, second track uh, of, of, of religious diplomacy, which is unofficial a religious diplomacy generally led by NGOs and non-state sector. Turkey's religious diplomacy in Bosnia and Herzegovina and in the Balkans in general should be viewed within a wider context. Ankara sees the Balkans as an area of strategic, economic and political importance and a region where it can exert its influence due to territorial proximity. Then. From the perspective of Balkan Muslims, there was a genuine need to reconstruct and renovate ailing Ottoman Islamic cultural heritage, which was either destroyed or simply neglected. Finally, post-communist religiosity among Balkan Muslims tangibly increased. 
Foreign factors saw this as an opportunity and sought to capitalize on the post-communist spiritual awakening and project their own influence. Seeing increased interest coming from the Middle East, Turkey jumped on the bandwagon and decided to exert its own influence. Local Muslim populations and Balkan Muslim leaders saw Turkey's interpretation of Islam as a panacea to the somewhat alien Saudi and Iranian interpretations. Well, when we talk about Turkey's religion, religious influence, we are not talking about an alien religious interpretation. Uh, many ma majority of Balkan Muslims actually converted to Islam under the Ottoman rule. I mean, Balkan Islam and Turkish version of Islam are very similar, if not the same. So that's why, uh, like a Saudi uh, religious influence uh, or Salafi Wahhabi ideologies or Iran, I I Iranian uh, Shia version of Islam, uh, Turkish Islam is not an alien. So uh, when Turkey come here uh, for religious influence, actually Turkey didn't need to change anything. Turkey only needed to support uh, local religious institutions via projects, via renovation projects, scholarships, uh, trainings or scholarships for students who want to study in Turkey uh, and many actually local uh, imams or local religious leader, leaders saw Turkey's religious influence as a cure against uh, the alien or foreign religious uh, influences such as Salafi Wahhabi or Iranian. So uh, around the, across the Balkans we see the rise of Salafi Wahhabi ideologies uh, and it's very natural after a post-communism era, as we see in many parts of the uh, world. So uh, Turkey was accepted and Turkish, Turkish version of Islam was accepted as a cure uh, to counter those uh, foreign uh, religious influences. The official Islamic community in Bosnia and Herzegovina found itself in a somewhat uncomfortable position. It was adamant on preserving its own independence and Islamic tradition, but at the same time, it wanted to maintain cordial relations with other Muslim countries, particularly those that provided significant aid during the 1990s war. Mohamed Velic is a prominent imam or religious leader in Sarajevo. He believes the Islamic community managed to stave off foreign Islamic influences and preserve its own religious autonomy. The Islamic community has, because of its inclusive approach and guided by the principles of selection, succeeded in incorporating all these foreign Islamic influences and new Islamic teachings, which have previously been unknown here, and managed to place them under its firm control. They have been incorporated and made local, so to speak. At the same time, it has managed to retain its autonomy. It has managed to retain its originality, its specificity, when it comes to Islamic teachings, culture and spirituality that it developed over the past decades and centuries. The Islamic community needed to bring many important decisions. It needed a lot of patience institutional patients among its top leadership. It needed to bring numerous strategic decisions. It needed to make coordinated and joint activities taken by the Grand Mufti, the administration, regional muftis and its local imams. It managed to turn all these foreign influences to its benefit. The Balkans will continue to draw Turkey's attention, regardless of which political party is in power. For Turkey's Islamists, there exists an almost automatic association between the Balkans and the Ottoman past. For Turkey's Kemalists, the Balkans associate them with Thessaloniki and Bitola, towns where the Republic's founder, Mustafa Kemal Atatürk, was born and educated. As for Balkan Muslims in general, and Bosniak Muslims in particular, minority complex and lack of a protective state is crucial in understanding their perception of Turkey. As Bosnian Serbs see Serbia as their motherland and protective state, and Bosnian Croats play the same fate in neighboring Croatia, many, though not all, Bosniak Muslims find solace in seeing Turkey as their protective state in a turbulent region where Muslims have been the primary targets in almost every war over the past century.